In this video, I'm going to try to capture the comet C2025A6 Lemon, but I can't use my observatory because the roof here is blocking my view. So I'm trying to capture it with my Sony camera and the 90mm macro lens. My name is Morten and you are watching Frost Astrophotography. When looking at the forecasts, this is my opportunity to capture this comet before it starts to get further away from the Earth and then also fainter. I won't have access to my normal 510 millimeters. I'm capturing this with my Sony a7 IV and the 90mm macro lens. It has been a while since I tried to capture a comet with my normal camera and especially with this camera since it is new to me and we will see how it goes and as a bonus I will show you some processing steps in PixInsight. The uh, Comet C2025A6 Lemon is a non-periodic comet discovered by the Mount Lemon survey and that is why it is equipped with the designation Lemon after the numbers here. It is supposed to make its closest approach to Earth at around October 21st, but it doesn't look great for me then, so I took this opportunity to see if I can photograph it. The uh, challenge for me is that it is very low here at 63 degrees north, this is around 25 degrees and it is not even astronomical darkness yet. And to add to the challenges, it is somewhat blocked by the big roof of my home observatory. I still want to make an attempt at imaging this comet, so I will try with my Sony a7 IV together with the only lens I have available that's somewhat suitable for this and that is my Sony FE 90mm macro lens. I will try to do this exercise with untracked photography and then I will stack a number of light frames to see if I can get the comet in an image or not. I put my camera on a tripod. I aimed at the edge of the big dipper and I took some images and found it right away. It was not a big problem. And this is uh, one six second light frame. It has been uh, calibrated with uh, darks and flats. We have a little bit of star trails here with the six second uh, 90 millimeters, but it won't be a big problem. I think I will run through blur exterminator and uh, it would also be somewhat zoomed out, even though I'm going to crop in a little bit here to try to emphasize the comet here. You can clearly see the comet even in one six second exposure. Now this hasn't been debayered yet. Uh, it has only been calibrated here in PixInsight, so I will do that next. Obviously, you're going to have some challenges when you are processing a comet because of the fact that the comet is moving. Normally, the objects that you are imaging are stationary and the stars are moving because of the Earth's rotation. 
and you fix that by tracking the stars. Well, in this case, I don't have that luxury, but I didn't take that many frames. I started with 40 light frames at 6 seconds each. Then I did two stacks, one with the normal star alignment and stacking and one with the comet alignment process and then stacking. In the image to the right, the stars are aligned and stacked and you don't have any movement whatsoever. You do have a little bit of movement in the comet, but you would normally see a elongated comet here and maybe more blurriness, but I only did 40 light frames here at six seconds each. That is four minutes. Uh, the comet uh, does not have that much time to move in four minutes. But it uh, did move a little bit. If you compare to the image to the left here, the comet has been centered here. It is a little bit more clear. It has a round tip, I would say. And in this one, it's not as round, even though, like I said, it does not have so much time to move in four minutes. The stars, however, around here on the outskirts of the field of view, you can see that they had a little bit of time to move in these four minutes that we are talking about. So that's not a big problem here because I am using the comet from the comet aligned stack and I'm using the stars from the star aligned stack on the right here. Just to quickly guide you through the steps of making a comet aligned stack, you will open up the process that is named comet alignment. And then you will add all of your files. Let's find my comet files, the calibrated one, of course. Uh, in this instance, you should also use the debayered ones. I did not do that for the purposes of this video. Uh, that's why you will see the undebayered ones, but disregard that for now. What you do here now is that you select an output directory where you want to have uh, the aligned images. Then you click on show first image. You will have to stretch the image there and you will zoom in. I will make a window that can fit the comet head here. And I will click on show last image. I will uh, make the window exactly the same. I will place it next to the first. I will stretch it. Then I will copy the settings here. And you can see that this is how much the comet has moved in four minutes in the night sky. So you just manually adjust it until you have it somewhat centered in the frame here. It doesn't really matter. We are only going to use this for marking purposes. So what we're doing now is that we are in the first image. We are selecting the coma of the comet here. So you place your marker in there and then you click to select it. And you take the last image. You do the same. You select the coma of the comet and you click that. And now you have two reference points for the movement of the comet. And everything in between will be calculated by PixInsight to actually line up all of the frames from the first to the last. Then you simply click on execute or apply global here. And then it will uh, align the images. 
When that process is done, you will simply open up image integration as usual, add your files and then stack them together to get the master stacked file. The next step in my processing was to do a dynamic crop here to come a little bit closer to the object. Remember that I only have my 90 millimeter Sony lens here. I don't have the 510 millimeters from my telescope. So I want to get in a little bit closer. So I did a crop. Remember to do the crop exactly the same way on the two uh, frames here. So this is the comet stacked one and this is the star stacked one. They are both cropped the same way. When that was done, I did some background neutralization on this one and some gradient corrections. Although I also corrected with flats. Remember that it is important, especially if you have a wide angle or wide field lens, it will be a lot of vignetting on, on the images there that you have to handle with flats or process them in some raw processing software for your camera before using PixInsight. The downside with that is that you will get processing done on the images. They will be stretched before you come into PixInsight and that could be a problem. I ran through my normal linear processing steps on these images here. I removed the stars on the comet here and I removed the comet and everything else in the star stacked image. Uh, being left only with the stars, but they're not stretched yet here. It's only been prepared to uh, make the stretch. I normally show a lot more steps. I didn't take as many steps this time because of the fact that I didn't have my usual narrow band data and uh, I'm not really used to processing uh, one shot color data, especially from my normal Sony camera that I recently bought mainly to take uh, Northern Lights images. But I manually stretched the two files here. I started off with generalized hyperbolic stretch and then I was forced a little bit here to actually align the uh, histogram for the channels. The color was a bit off here. So you can do that by opening up histogram transformation you can select an individual color here and you can adjust so the peaks of each individual color will be exactly on top of each other here. Otherwise you might get a tint of a solid color that is very likely to be green. Even though it would be nice to have the whole comet green here, I don't think it's so natural, so I would suggest doing some color calibration. SPCC wasn't really an option for me. I didn't have the image solved and I had some issues finding the plate solving for it. So I just gave that up and manually adjusted the colors here. In the Stalis version of the comet here also, I had to use clone stamp to remove some of the artifacts because star exterminator wasn't perfect. Then I ran through a little bit of sharpening uh, and noise exterminator one more time. Then I adjusted the saturation of the colors to get it a little bit more green. It wasn't that much. Remember, this is only four minutes, so that's why uh, we have that problem. I also had to adjust the colors on the stars here. They were all a little bit too green, but I wanted to preserve this. This is actually the tip of the comet here that Star Exterminator 
uh, interpreted as a star, but I want to put that back because that was actually a bit removed from the Comet version here. So it will look nice when they are integrated together. When I was done with that, I just joined them together with pixel math. As usual, adding the stars here to the background of the C2025A6 Lemon Comet. And you can see the tail a very, very long way here, all the way up to here, maybe. Even though this is only four minutes, it's 40 light frames, six seconds each, untracked on a very small little tripod. Cropped in a little bit, but I must say I'm very pleased with the result here. I don't think I will have the opportunity to image this with my telescope because it it is bad weather now. Uh, when it is finally coming a little bit close to northeast here, it will be very faint or a lot fainter than it is now. So maybe maybe I will attempt to do it. If not, this will be uh, my version of this comet and hopefully some more comets in the future. Enjoy this image now and I will see you in a new processing video soon. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.